What is up, guys? Marcellus Williams, aka the Swole Faster, here to educate you on health, fitness, and social well being. And today, guys, we're going to be taking a deeper look into volume. Pretty much taking things we've talked about before. You know, we've done a general overview over volume before. We've talked about the connection between strength and hypertrophy. We've talked about how all rep ranges work equally for hypertrophy so long as total workload is the same. Meaning, if you're doing sets of three, whether you're doing sets of five, sets of ten, it doesn't matter because it comes down to the total volume, the total workload being your sets times your reps times your weight. And then looking at looking at that over a weekly basis, more so than just you know a day to day basis, because you can have you know one session where you're training you know with a sufficient amount of volume, but then not be training with enough volume the rest of the week, and you're not going to see as much growth as you'd like because it's kind of about that total weekly volume now granted your weekly volume is determined by your session so each session matters each week matters your monthly progress matters it all goes together hand in hand but it's pretty much looking at the bigger picture don't get so caught up on just oh i had a really good week but then the other three weeks of the month were garbage or oh hey i had a really good you know workout one day but the other six days out of the week were trash so we want to look at the total workload the total weekly volume just because that's kind of the easiest way to plan things out when we're looking at things like you know our our um, our meso cycles which are pretty much about you know a month our micro cycles which are about a week and then you have of course the entire macro cycle which can be anywhere from say six months to a year planning that all out and pretty much the way you want to go about doing that now in the description box below guys you're going to see the video um the video link over volume where we pretty much just talk about the very basics as far as like you know what's high volume for one person may not be high volume for somebody else and how you know volume is specific to the individual even though there's general rules like beginners don't need as much volume to grow intermediate lifters and advanced lifters need a little need more volume to grow but even within those categories guys it's going to vary from person to person some people can simply handle more volume due to their genetic work capacity some people can handle a little bit less so it's not so much that oh you're beginner intermediate advanced based upon the volume that you're handling but it's just the fact that as you go from becoming a beginner to an intermediate to advanced whatever you started with workload wise is obviously going to increase from there and also in the description box down below guys will be the videos you know talking about the connection between strength and hypertrophy and the one talking about rep ranges just so you guys have references to look to if you're confused by anything that we discuss in this video now getting right into it why does this matter why is it so important to understand your total workload and your total volume simply put guys due to diminished returns you guys understand at this point that each year you're gonna put on approximately at best half the amount of muscle that you did the year before you're not gonna get as strong as quickly as you did the year before and even though the um, you know the, the regression with strength is a little bit different I wouldn't even so much call it regression but like you know the patterns of how you build strength are gonna be very different compared to the amount of muscle with the muscle it's pretty much on a set rate you're gonna gain about half or a little bit less than that each year but the point is despite that being the case you pretty much have to put in more total workload more volume as you become a more intermediate advanced lifter just to see less muscle gains which sucks right but it's important that due to understanding this we really make sure that we're utilizing proper programming in order to squeeze out as much muscle as we can each and every year and that's why your total workload matters so getting into the deeper topics of it the first thing i want to talk about guys is your minimum effective volume simply put this is the least amount of volume that you can do in order to grow and you always want to make sure that you're training with at least this much you really want to you know you, ideally you want to start around this and build it up but you want to be training with at least this much because if you don't simply put you're not going to grow because once again your minimum effective volume is the amount of volume that you need to see any progression as far as like you know um, muscle gains so if you're training below this then the best you can hope to do is maintain but you're definitely not going to see progression you're not going to get um, any bigger and you're probably going to even notice that you're not getting as strong as quickly as you could be because once again there is a very 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 strong connection between hypertrophy and strength even though you can focus a little bit more on one than the other the two still go hand in hand if you're gradually getting bigger then you're gradually getting stronger if you're gradually getting stronger then you're gradually getting bigger even though you can focus a little bit more on one than the other even if whether we're talking about you know you focus more on one the other on a specific day or if we're talking about a full-on like you know a meso cycle where you're focusing on hypertrophy versus a meso cycle where you're focusing on strength but that's pretty much how it works with your minimum effective volume you want to be making sure that you're working at at least that and ideally most programs are going to start you off especially if it's like a hypertrophy volume focused program they're going to start you off around that now what this is once again is going to vary from person 
the person just because different people can handle different amounts of volume. So the way you kind of find this is going to be through trial and error. But by the time you're at the intermediate stage, especially the advanced stage, you've been lifting long enough, you, you've done enough training, enough programming to kind of get an idea of what you need to do to at least be at that minimum effective volume. Now, what I am going to suggest you guys do is check out Dr. Mike Isretel. He's pretty much like one of the leading experts when it comes to, you know, volume training is along with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, of course, but Dr. Mike is he has a bunch of charts and great research articles explaining kind of like, you know, ideally where you may want to start around in terms of like your sets, percentage of um, the weight that you're using and everything like that, just because it can vary, right? It wouldn't make sense for me to be like, oh, your minimum effective volume is going to start around 10 sets because it's like, okay, well, what are we talking about? We're talking about 10 sets of three, 10 sets of five, 10 sets of 10. And of course, it's going to vary based upon how much total weight that you're using. Using for the mere fact that, okay, if I say, hey, three sets of 10 with 100 pounds is the same thing as 10 sets of three with 100 pounds for total workload, that's true. But the reality is if you're doing 10 sets of three versus three sets of 10, you're probably working with heavier loads and therefore the recovery from that is gonna be a little bit different than the three sets of 10, assuming that you know, you're working with heavier loads on the 10 sets of three. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind, right? And then when people ask questions like, well, why would you even wanna do the 10 sets of three versus three sets of 10 if it's about equal workload because it sounds like that'll take longer. Once again, depends on your goals. Um, we do know that even though rep ranges don't seem to have a big impact in terms of hypertrophy, assuming you know that the workload is equal, we do know that they have an impact in terms of performance, meaning higher rep ranges are gonna help you more with like conditioning muscular endurance, whereas the lower rep ranges are gonna help you with strength. Meaning if I have somebody trained with 10 sets of three and the other person is trained with three sets of 10 and they're using the same amount of weight in the bar and the, and the weight's gradually going up, the person who's working with higher reps is probably gonna have a little bit better muscular endurance the person working with lower reps is going to have is going to be better at working with um, strength, even though they're going to probably see the same amount of hypertrophy. So that's pretty much the answer to that. So that's pretty much how it works as far as minimum effective volume, right? Like I said, it's going to vary from person to person. And that's pretty much where we want to start off and build up from there. Now, in contrast to that, a problem that a lot of people run into is exceeding their MRV or their max recoverable volume. And this is something that I tend to see is a problem with beginners. Once again, beginners will look at intermediate advanced lifters, see what they're doing and try to mimic it. Instead of asking, hmm, what did they do to get to this point? They'll just look at what they're doing and assume, oh, I have to do what they're doing to get where they're at. And that's where a lot of them start to see um, issues in terms of not progressing or even um, regressing. Because the thing with your max recoverable volume, guys, is that if you go over that, you are not going to see any progression. In fact, you're going to see regression. You're going to lose strength and you're going to eventually, if you keep down that path, lose muscle mass for the mere fact that you were working with more volume than what your body can recover from. And if your body can't recover from the workload, it essentially makes it pointless. It's like saving up a whole bunch of money, but then spending it all. You have nothing left in the bank, right? So like you're done or really it's worse than that. It's like, it's like taking, it's like saving a hundred dollars, but then withdrawing, trying to withdraw 150. Now you're negative. You have nothing that you can that you can use right and now you have to even build back up to just your normal baseline um, amount of money that you had i don't know if that's a good analogy or not but the point is you um if you can't recover from the workload that you're doing then you're not going to see any progression if you keep doing that then you're going to start to lose strength lose muscle mass so a lot of people their solution to this quote unquote is to basically just try to okay well i'll just make sure that i train right at my max recoverable volume but i definitely won't go over it that's not a very good idea either guys for the mere fact that if you train right at your max recoverable volume even if you don't go over it you're not gonna see progression that way either. You may not see regression, you may not lose strength and muscle mass, but you're pretty much gonna stagnate. Why? Well, because it's gonna take all of your body's resources and energy just to recover from that max recoverable volume. So even though you may be able to recover from it, you're not gonna have any energy left over to actually build muscle mass and strength. So it's pretty much like, okay, I'm gonna put $100 in the bank, then spend $100. Put $100 in the bank, then spend $100. I'm pretty much always staying at the same place. I'm not actually saving anything, right? So it's the same thing in terms of your max recoverable volume. So what is the real solution? The real solution, guys, is to be working with your MAV, your max additive volume. Basically, with your um, maximum adaptive volume, what you're going to be doing is starting a little bit above your um, your MEV, your minimum effective volume, and gradually building the workload up from there. Basically, we're in this sweet spot, guys. It's that spot where we're constantly able to, you know, progressively overload and then adapt and then compensate. So we're constantly building up 
getting stronger, getting bigger, constantly progressing. Now, this can only last for so long, right? Why? Well, because we start off in that sweet spot, which may start a little bit above, you know, the MEV, but as we keep training, we keep progressing, we're eventually gonna get to the point where our bodies are approaching that MRV, which isn't a bad thing. So if we're training correctly with proper cycles, as we get closer to that MRV, that max recovery volume, it's that's the times where it may be okay to kind of go over it a little bit because we spent most of our time using that maximum adaptative volume. So if we go over it a little bit, Bit, especially if it's going to be right before a deload or right before we go into a new training cycle where we're going to start back over with that minimum effective volume that can actually help us because that's what's known as overreaching which i've talked about on this channel before where if you overreach a little bit then super compensation happens which is going to help to build up your overall strength work capacity and muscle but it's not the same thing as constantly trying to train with your mass recovery volume to where you're never able to actually recover and then eventually start to regress so basically this is how it works. We're going to start a little bit above our minimum effective volume, right? And we're going to gradually build that up using that max additative volume. And as we get closer to that MRV, we're going to scale it back and start over. But when you start over, that minimum effective volume that you're starting with more than likely is going to be a little bit higher than where you started before. Why? Well, because you've gotten stronger. You've built more muscle. You've built up your work capacity. So the minimum amount that you can start with is going to be a little bit higher. So you constantly keep going back and forth so it's kind of like you're saving a bunch of money right and then you have to spend some money but you still have a little bit of money left in your account and then you start back over saving some money then you spend some money but the amount that you start with every single time where you're saving is always going to be a little bit higher than what you started with so in the long run it's kind of like yeah you got to spend money to make money but ultimately that amount that you always have saving your bank is constantly going up and that's pretty much the key to volume guys right so that's how you want to look at it like i said you're going to learn a lot of this through trial and error like i said definitely look up dr mike israel and his research on this because it's going to give you more specific numbers kind of as a baseline to work with but it's just going to vary it's going to depend on how you train there's so many different ways to set up um you know your micro cycle meaning your total um week uh work your total weekly workload your uh, meso cycles which are more like you know a month to two months and then your macro cycles we plan everything out but the key is you do want to get into the habit of planning everything out over time because it all goes together hand in hand but what that's going to be is going to be very specific to you and there's so many different ways to go about it right especially when we just look at things as simple as body part splits upper lower versus full body full body versus push pull legs or even a bro split so the amount of volume you do from day to day from week to week all of it can vary based upon you and how you set up your programming there is no one correct way to go about it even though there's some ways that are more optimal than another it's ultimately finding the way that you enjoy and then finding the way that's just going to be best for you both psychologically but then also physically as well in terms of what you can specifically recover from but yeah guys that's pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i know a lot of you are probably having questions about what's going on in terms of the workout on screen like why i was doing flat dumbbell press and versus barbell bench press um just hold off on those questions for now guys because next week i will be doing a video going over my program and you guys know i'm always transparent with you guys i'm always explaining to you guys what i'm doing you're gonna be seeing what my current meso cycles look like and what my plan for the micro cycle is looking like leading into my next meet which will be june 30th power fest in houston texas but for the time being just hold off on that be looking forward for the next informative video which will be over three important tools to accurately track your body composition or at least as closely as we're able to and then at the end of that video you guys will of course once again have two options in terms of which informative video you want to see next but yeah thank you guys for watching the video appreciate you guys hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know what you did if you did not leave a comment down below let me know what i can do to get better like the video share subscribe keep it simple specific scientific i'll catch y'all later